A couple of viewers had asked for some details of the forces involved in this shrub puller used in the video defending fringed gentians. If some of you still wake up with periodic nightmares from high school physics classes, this would probably be a good time to switch to some other video. We're going to be examining forces and torque, more commonly referred to in engineering by the broader term moment. We'll also be looking at a free body diagram and independently summing the forces in the horizontal and in the vertical directions. And then we'll be taking a look at some of the smaller details that are necessary to make a device like this work. Torque is often a consideration in the tightening or loosening of a nut. Imagine we have a mechanic who's had a rough, rough day and is so dog tired that they can only exert 15 pounds of force on a wrench. It makes no sense to pull on the wrench here because that produces only a short lever arm. Multiplying that 4 inch lever arm by the 15 pound pull will only yield a torque or a moment of 60 inch pounds on that nut. If the pull is exerted on the end of the 10 inch wrench, the torque on the nut will be increased to 150 inch-pounds. It would also not make sense to pull in a direction nearly parallel to the wrench. The torque is calculated by multiplying the pull by the perpendicular distance from the pivot point to the line of the force. In this case, the perpendicular distance, also referred to as the moment arm, is only 3 inches so the moment or torque applied to the nut would be only 45 inch-pounds. If we look at our shrub puller, we can imagine it as having a loosened nut at the bottom and one moment trying to turn it counterclockwise while the shrub is exerting a resisting moment in the clockwise direction. If we draw this up as a more simplified diagram, we have a pivot point at the bottom of our device the pivot point offers no resistance to rotation, but does prevent movement horizontally and vertically. In engineering, this would be referred to as a pinned connection. If we look at the counterclockwise moment acting on our device, we see that we have the force exerted by the winch multiplied by the 48-inch lever arm. I'm going to estimate that the winch was exerting around 600 pounds of force, acting on that four-foot lever arm to create a moment of 2,400 foot-pounds. The shrub is valiantly resisting that moment, but has only been given a 16-inch moment arm to act on. Just before we increase the pull of the winch, no rotation is taking place so the moment applied by the winch and the resisting moment from the shrub are equal. If we divide both sides of the equation by that 16 inches, we find that the force the shrub is resisting with is 1,800 pounds. The ratio of the moment arms at this instant in the exertion is 48 inches to 16 inches, or a factor of 3. This is also the ratio between the force exerted on the shrub and the force being exerted by the winch. If we wanted to, we could get an even greater force multiplier by further reducing the moment arm available to the shrub. With only an 8 inch moment arm available, we would be creating a 6 to 1 moment advantage. However, Rotating our device counterclockwise would produce very little upward movement. To lift the shrub by any distance, we need the top of our device to rise relative to the shrub. 
The simple engineering calculation we ran through earlier is known as summing the moments about a point. Another basic engineering technique is called analyzing the free body diagram. We have already done that with the moments, but we have not done it with the forces. To keep things simple, I have redrawn the diagram to show the winch exerting its force horizontally to the left and the shrub exerting its resistance vertically downward. To be completely accurate, we should also show that the weight of the device itself was applying a 40 pound force downward. For the forces shown, the 1,800 pound vertical force is not applying any force either to the left or to the right. However, we do have a 600 pound force that should be sending the device speeding off to the left. Something must be countering that force. The pivot point is providing that resistance, exerting a balancing force acting to the right. This is an important point to remember if you set up an extension ladder on a sidewalk and climb the ladder. Your weight on the ladder puts a horizontal force on the feet of the ladder. If the angle of your ladder is too steep or the friction on the sidewalk is too low, the ladder will slide out. To make sure that the foot of this device doesn't slip out, the base is made from a channel so that these two flanges can dig into the soil. The other force we need to look at with the free body diagram is the balancing of the vertical forces. Since the shrub is pulling down with 1,800 pounds of force, the base needs to be able to push up with 1,800 pounds of force. We'll skip the 40 pound weight of the device itself. To distribute that ton of force and make sure the device doesn't get pushed down into the soil, this channel is two feet wide. There is one other reason this width is important. Say our device has 600 pounds of force going that direction and nearly a force of a ton going down that direction. It would be very easy with those two forces trying to pull this thing down for it to suddenly go that way or suddenly go that way. That's why it's important to have this broad base on it so that it can be sorted either direction. I'm not a good welder by any means. I've kind of gobbed on uh, metal on both sides of it. So it remains to be seen if that welding and that base will give it the stability it needs to prevent it from going sideways. If you're trying to lift anything substantial with a device like this, it's very important to make sure that it's supported laterally so it doesn't fall one way or the other. With an unbalanced force on her chain, 600 pounds going that way and 1,800 going this way, we need to have something to prevent the chain from being pulled over the edge. That's why I've uh, used my plasma cutter, again badly, to cut this notch here to capture the uh, link of chain. As a last issue, this device weighs about 45 pounds and so we want to be able to carry it conveniently. So I welded on this handle and we want it to be fairly well balanced. One of the neat things you can do is to find the balance point. You just simply slide your hands together and it will always come to the balance point. 